According to Arvind Gupta, the head of Digital India Foundation, a public platform is something that is built around the concept of openness, standard and trust. It is backed by the government and not by any private entity. There are about 9 platforms with billion plus users each across the world. Five of them are in the US and four in China, and none of them are government backed. With Aadhaar, India built the world's first and largest public digital platform. And now, Nandan Nilekani, who helped the government create the biometric identification for almost 1.4 billion people after co-founding Infosys, believes that Open Network for Digital Commerce or ONDC meets all the criteria for the next revolution and disruption in India. It has the government's commitment, the market condition is ripe, and there is a massive shift to e-commerce after the pandemic. ONDC seeks to level the playing field for small merchants in the country's fragmented but fast-growing $1 trillion retail market. While addressing a conference, Nilekani recently said that ONDC is very similar to National Payments Corporation of India or NPCI, which is also a non-profit Section 8 company. The small-scale implementation of ONDC kicked off on Friday last week. This pilot is being conducted across Delhi, Bengaluru, Coimbatore, Bhopal and Shillong. It will be later launched in 100 cities over a period of six months. ONDC will set protocols in critical areas like price discovery, vendor match and cataloging, ostensibly in open source. So you ideally get an open network with open specifications and protocols. Clearly, there's a lot of stress on the open part. India has a very large open source community which believes that in the digital economy, certain digital infrastructure should be public goods. And India being the other large country in the world after China, though a much poorer country than China, has a very large software service industry and an open source community. Now this community felt that we need to have a digital identity, the recommended Aadhaar. Then they said we must have an India stack to make sure that financial services goes to the people. UPI came out of it and UPI is, you know, possibly the best digital payment system in the world. Then they found that there is a problem about the large number of mom and shops and retailers here. And they found that people like Walmart was taken over Flipkart, Amazon, and maybe Geo are creating digital monopolies in their own field. Though the Geo model is very different. And they felt, how do we make sure that the you know, likelihood of Crows of people who are mom and shop, mom and pop shops are not destroyed. Although not everyone agrees on calling ONDC a public good. It is being said that these are public goods. I think we need to remember that uh, ONDC is a private company. It is owned uh, by private players. And so therefore the attempt is to replace two, uh, uh, the, the duopoly of Amazon and Flipkart with the monopoly of ONDC. We've seen a similar move in digital payments where NPCI, um, which runs uh, UPI, which is India's largest payments protocol and payment service, um, is also a private monopoly um, and has competed extremely well with MasterCard and Flipkart. Uh, let's not forget that NPCI actually contested the fact that they are not under RTI. So to call any of these entities, whether it is NPCI or it's ONDC, as public goods or calling this public infrastructure would be factually incorrect because it's not owned by the government. It is not run by the government. It is not accountable to the government. Um, it is not accountable to the people of this country under, um, uh, under RTI. And um, as I mentioned earlier, this is also not open source. It's not open standards. All of this is in the service of one goal to change the e-commerce market's fundamental structure by moving from the current platform-centric model to an open network model. For instance, leather jacket seller Karan is only registered on Amazon. Meanwhile, Arjun, a prospective buyer who has heard of Karan's quality jackets, is registered on Flipkart alone. Arjun will first look for Karan on Flipkart. After failing to find him there, Arjun will have to register for an Amazon account. However, once ONDC is implemented, Arjun can directly purchase Karan's leather jackets without registering on Amazon. Why is this such a big deal though? There's no prohibition on Karan also registering as a Flipkart seller. Meanwhile, buyers shop across platforms as a matter of routine. With an account only on one e-commerce site, Arjun is probably an outlier. So, uh, what 
uh, such a mechanism allows is that it does allows you to do comparison shopping. Um, and there are sites available for that as well, where you can check the price of products across multiple platforms and you can buy from whichever platform. The thing is that most people end up going directly by default to either Flipkart or Amazon because they're used to buying from those platforms. So the challenge will be to create new apps and new services on top of all the information about these products, which is going to be available across, uh, I mean, via ONDC, um, and then getting consumers to actually buy from that, as opposed to buying from the apps and services that they're used to buying from. Clearly, the real benefit would come in the form of future offerings that could be built on top of this platform agnostic approach. And the work on that front has already started. About 150 retailers and five seller platforms are participating in the ONDC pilot. A buyer side application, Paytm, has been connected with the seller side app through the ONDC architecture. The consumer can use the Paytm app and place orders with the participating retailers. The number of both buyer side apps and retailers will increase as ONDC is scaled up. Also on board for the pilot is a logistics provider. As more logistics providers adopt the ONDC architecture in the future, consumers will have a greater choice of delivery partners. This should also answer a question many people have about ONDC. ONDC is not an application or a platform in itself. Once ONDC gets implemented, all e-commerce companies and online businesses in India will have to operate using the same processes and standards, as in the case of Android-based mobile devices from different brands. According to reports, this could mean a complete revamp of systems for e-commerce players. They could end up losing control over their user interface and, even more importantly, consumer behavior insights. Basically, their competitive advantages. All of this amounts to a far-reaching and difficult reconfiguration. For the government to force all e-commerce sites to use a particular protocol uh, would be anti-competitive in a sense. Uh, uh, they can't force it and it would, uh, it would deter innovation. Um, different sites operate in different ways. They, are, they take different approaches to selling to customers. They don't necessarily take a protocol approach. So if the government were to force all sites to adopt or adapt uh, this particular protocol under ONDC, I think it would be within their rights for, for e-commerce platforms to go to court. ONDC may also erode Amazon and Walmart-owned Flipkart's online domination, which has alarmed small merchants and the millions of Kirana stores that form India's retail backbone. The two global giants have captured 80% of India's online retail market with the help of aggressive discounts and promotion of preferred sellers. That's easier said than done though. Ask yourself, why do Amazon and Flipkart dominate the market? Well, both merchants and buyers flock to their platforms because of their tested technology. However, despite the challenges involved, the government's backing will give ONDC an outsized advantage. Using UPI, where, 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 you know, there are millions of people and gross of people in UPI, tell them that you can download this ad and sell. And all you have to do is this, right? Or if you are on Amazon and Flipkart, you can transition from there and be on this platform too, so that more and more sellers come there. And as a buyer, you know, you are already on UPI, you're already with Aadhaar, they can easily send you a download and you can download the app and get onto the platform. Government can also say, that we are willing to buy from people on this platform. If you if you look at a parallel, right, uh, UPI had its moment in demonetization. Um, it had its moment when the Beam app was launched and the Prime Minister supported the Beam app and UPI, and he's continued to support Beam and UPI, even though these are essentially private uh, entities and private services. Uh, perhaps it will require governmental support and a government kind of push um, but also, let's not forget that like UPI, this will also need private partnership uh, and private uh, apps deployed um, by those who want to compete with Amazon and Flipkart. Last but not least, the question that ONDC needs to answer is who will own the consumer data and who will have access to it?
If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.